And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Walls of York. When I first saw Walls of York, I was really interested in it uh, because I like things that Creative Creations does. I also like how this game, you're putting walls out in surrounding areas. There's a game I really like that did that called Domain. Oh, I still like it. Um, and this game had a similar look to it, but each player had their own board. In fact, this game, when I first saw it, reminded me a bit of a roll and write style game. Let me show you. Each player is going to have their own player board. This board has these four outside pieces, frame pieces holding them in, and then four spots. Everyone's going to get the same four. You'll notice there's these little uh, gems here in the middle with a black arrow or a white arrow on the other side. You're going to put these in randomly, or players will pick. It doesn't matter. But it, what matters is everyone does the same thing. So here I put the white diamond, blue gem, yellow gem, purple gem, all with black arrows facing upward, so everyone else would build the exact same thing. You then are going to roll three dice here into this kind of cool looking dice tower. And that's going to tell you how many of each building you need to have in your property. So to say, I need to have two churches, four wells, and four of these houses. This dice ranges from, um, goes all the way up to four, although one of them has a zero on it. So it's possible that you won't need any of those buildings. So players are going to have to build something that includes all of this in there. They're going to do that by each turn. One person's going to roll the die, it doesn't really matter who. And you're going to look at the walls there. So this says build a straight wall that's two like that. So I'm going to look around here at my property and maybe I'll build it like this. Is that what I want? Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, then the next one here will say this, build it like a U. And so hmm, maybe I'll build it like this now. And you're trying to build an area on the board that has as many coins in as few Vikings, but it must contain what's shown in that shield. Now everyone does is now if you want to, see this one here has an L shape, you can ignore what it shows here on the building of the walls and simply place one wall of your choice. You do not have to connect things. So for example, I could build this here as the next piece using that L shape. So then you just keep going until someone finishes. As soon as someone has a complete perimeter that includes everything they need to have. So I need to have two churches, boom, I got them. I need to have four wells, one, two, three, four. I need to have four houses, one, two, three, four. You'll take off all the extra stuff that you don't need. So I take off all these walls, these extra walls here, and you have your perimeter. Now, if other people are not yet done, then every time the die is rolled, you're going to get one through three coins based on the other side of the die that's rolled. So you can't take forever rolling because you're going to be giving everyone else points. Once everyone is finished, you will then, everyone will get coins. So I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve coins. You're also going to get a Viking for each Viking that you have inside your area. So one, two, three, four, five, I get six Viking tokens. Whoever has the most Viking tokens is going to turn one of those tokens over, discard the rest. This is worth minus five at the end of the game. Not, not so great. Then everyone will get rid of this. You're going to re-roll the dice and start at round two. After the second round, whoever has the fewest Vikings is going to get a token that's worth three coins. Uh, and then you're going to add up your total number of points. And whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. The rule book is very, very short. I mean, you can almost learn the rules just from this game in short in the back. They got an extra few optional rules. I like the perfect plan. If you don't need to move any, any wall piece at the end, you get extra things. The longest wall. And it even mentioned that you can take more than one box and play with more builders. I mean, you could literally play with a thousand people, I suppose, if you're all playing at the same time. Uh, the things here, I think that the different the tiles are very easy to tell apart. It's easy to tell which direction they go in. The perimeter pieces are a little thinner than I would like them to be. They're very thin, but they do hold it together once you get them in there. You have to build this dice tower piece here 
but when you are done it does fit in the box so that's good you don't have to rebuild it each turn and it's just kind of a neat little thing here you know to take these three dice and then just put them well apparently i can't drop it into a little hole here but it's not really that difficult so here we got three one and four or three zero and three and each time these numbers are going to change how you're putting everything out there Essentially, this game is a roll and write game, as I said at the beginning. You could have given everyone a pad of paper and you just draw, you know, where the walls go. Now, granted, because it's physical, I can take those four boards and put them in a wide variety of configurations. I believe that there is, you know, you can have any of, uh, well, eight times four, 32. There's, there's a humongous amount. It's, it's, it's near infinity it's not near infinity but it's near infinity for purposes of you'll never play with the same board twice um so the game is essentially a race you're rolling and everyone's doing the same thing on the same board you could copy other people you're not supposed to look at other people's board while you're putting down pieces and every time i played this i looked at and it's like wow everyone's board looks completely different you always have that single piece you can put out but man, it feels like, ah, because there's either two or three, you're always putting out a few less wall pieces. But sometimes you just want to put one in a certain spot and the weird configuration doesn't work. And in fact, I like playing with the bonus of if you, if you basically don't use extra pieces, you get a bonus. I like that. I like the longest wall thing too. But again, it's kind of a race. You can sit there and be like, I'm going to get all these. I'm going to cut out as many Vikings as I can. Great. The problem with that is you're giving coins to other people. If you finish slow in this game, it's going to be hard to win because you are giving everyone else that many points every single turn. That doesn't happen too often. I would say usually it's three or four turns. Maybe the first person done is ahead of other people, but that still could be anywhere from four to 12 coins. That's a lot of point victory difference. The game does not overstay its welcome. You play twice. That's perfect. I like it a lot. So this is just a game that I was very, when I first played it, I was enthused, played it again and instantly, played it again. Just a great, great, cool game. Uh, some people might complain that maybe it's too big for what it is, like the box and all, but I don't think that's a big deal. I'm also pretty happy with four. I know that you can get multiple copies of this and play with more than four players, but it seems like it just works really well in that situation. And it has that cool little dice tower, which is neat. Overall, I like it a lot, and I think, you know, this is kind of just a game that's really easy to teach people and jump into, and that's a good thing. Walls of York. Dice Tower Judgment approved!